Haven't you asked yourself why the fuck all these science-based lifters are weak as fuck and small as fuck? They are paralyzed by analyzing every single movement pattern, doing only movements that are perfect in the line with biomechanics and controlling the movement for 10 seconds. You will not gain any strength, you will not gain any size by controlling the weight too much by being a perfectionist and that horse cucking. <laughs> Big heavy weights. What the fuck? The science-based lifting community has blinded us from the bigger picture of progressively getting stronger, of the principle of progressive overload. You can get stronger and bigger with doing like this long eccentric and long pauses, but it is not necessary and you will produce more growth and more strength by not overdoing it, by not being a perfectionist with your form, with your technique and especially with your exercise selection. You don't need any either pull down or stuff like that if you are not an advanced or late intermediate lifter. I myself have incorporated these diagonal pulls, length and partials, iliac pull downs in my training because I've already built my base with the basics. The basics are called the basics for a reason. You cannot skip that novice, beginner and early intermediate phase without building your base by getting strong as fuck on the basic movement patterns, bench press, row, pull up, Shoulder press, squats, deadlift, just because I mentioned the SPD and some additional lifts doesn't mean that you have to become a power lifter and just focus on strength, as strength is not the only metric for hypertrophy, but it is a big factor. Don't focus on strength for warm-up max, but for reps. Imagine someone like myself, I'm at 80 kilos for 6 reps on the bench, because I lifted like those science-based lifters, I went too slow on the eccentric, I paused too long and I pushed it up but there was no weight that was beneficial for the weighted stretch, which is the most hypertrophic part of the movement. If you go too slow in the eccentric and focus on the stretch, this paradoxically makes the stretch weaker. Imagine yourself going a little bit faster, you don't have to yank it off your chest or go down in an extremely fast motion, like don't touch and go like a monkey, but imagine yourself going like this instead of this, you will have more of a stretch because you are using more weight because you are like here controlling the weight here and trying to pause it fastly after going down a little bit more faster you will have more of a stretch as your muscles have to decelerate the movement much more faster as imagine yourself doing the same shit for five seconds there is no stretch here because you are already slowing down the movement before the stretch even happens you are lowering the weight relatively fast in the bottom position if you are not letting the weight hit your legs, which you shouldn't because then you lose muscle tension, you have to actively decelerate the weight and that requires high forces. So when you're lowering the weight faster compared to very slowly, you actually have extra emphasis on the bottom position because then in the bottom position, you have to fully decelerate the weight, re-accelerate it to initiate the next concentric action. So not only do you get a potentiating effect from the stretch reflex, you also get the benefit of having very high forces in the bottom position, which might enhance stretch mediated hypertrophy. So in the end, the seemingly obvious benefit of lowering the weight more slowly and emphasizing the concentric actually doesn't translate into greater tension on the muscle, and it might actually reduce the amount of tension in the most important position, which is typically the bottom position when the muscle is most stretched and lengthened. I got a little bit sidetracked, but my main point was to just get stronger at the big main movements stop going too slow on every single thing, stop being perfectionist with your exercise selection and analyzing every single fucking thing in your training program. And after you've got strong on those basic movement patterns and movements, you can of course incorporate like more advanced techniques like length and partials, like more di diagonal pull to it, that's better. But don't believe for a second that someone who can do five to 10 pull-ups with 40 kilos that he will have a small back because he didn't isolate his movements with some bullshit iliac pull down. The main point of training is to get strong as fuck for reps. You have to induce progressive overload and that is best with those basic movement patterns. Of course you can get stronger with iliac pull downs and all those small exercises but that's just the addition, that's just the cherry on the cupcake or on the cake, I don't give a fuck. You can get much stronger at weighted pull-ups at rows, bench, than on these small little isolation movements. I did some powerlifting one to two years ago and I'm much bigger now, but I noticed some muscle groups like the upper back, 
lower back and especially my legs were much thicker as I was using heavier ass weights. I wasn't controlling the form like I am now or which I will change. I wasn't going down for four seconds, pausing for four. I was trying to get stronger. I was focusing on the basics. I was focusing on progressive overloads and that is what got me thick as fuck instead of isolating and focusing on all the small little details that don't matter at all. Science-based lifting is not bad per se, it's just your int interpretation and the people you watch which are not good for you. People like Dr. Mike are good for general information but they focus too much on being in the stretch position for 5 seconds, going down for 5 seconds. The optimal rep tempo which is confirmed by science is 2-8 to eight seconds and you don't have to control the movement that much as it will reduce the weight and it will honestly be fucking boring to lift that way. You can just pick heavy weights, get fucking strong, horse cock it. If your rep is at two seconds or slightly under it, you will still make the same gains as these enhanced lifters, which need to, enhanced lifters like Dr. Mike and his team, need to use those fucking long eccentrics and pauses as the ligaments and tendons of enhanced lifters are much weaker than of natural lifters. If you take a cycle, your muscles will grow rapidly, but your tendons and ligaments stay the same, which just means that if you go heavy as fuck and use all your force by horse cocking the weight as an enhanced lifter, you will tear your shit. You have seen the clips on the internet. Level Reels is the perfect example. But if you're watching this video and are a natural lifter, you don't have to use the techniques of someone who is enhanced. Of course, 90% of his content is still good, but, but you have to follow the right sources that are best for your natural body to build the most amount of muscle. Another example is Ben Yarns, or I don't know how he's called. He's doing all these fancy little movements and not any compound movements. He's a coach with 200 thousands of followers on Instagram, but he's small as fuck. He's over analyzing and overvaluing the importance of biomechanics. You don't have to do cable press arounds to hit the chest just to bench press. You don't have to do elect pull downs to build the lats maximally. Just get heavy at weighted pull ups and fucking heavy rows. And after you've built your base, which Benyans didn't, but he's coaching people, then you can add those small movements and see how it works for you. For example, myself again, those diagonal pulls, those lead focus rows are really good, but you need to have a base first. As I said, science-based lifting isn't bad, it's just your interpretation and the people you follow. Good sources, for example, are Dr. Milo Wolf and Menno Hanselmans. And if you follow science correctly, you will see that all these things that I'm talking about in this video and in other videos, all these things that gym bros have been preaching for a long time like you've you've seen jay cutler ronnie coleman and all those bodybuilders like doing just half reps on the bench press that is because of the length and position the length and position is the most hypertrophic part of the movement and to really focus the chest you have to do it that way as if you lock out just more triceps and small details like this that gym bros have been doing forever not going too slow but horse hucking weights with some control is best for hypertrophy all these things are confirmed by science. You can look it up, watch Mano Hanselmans, watch Dr. Milo Wolf. They're talking about this. They're preaching good science. They're preaching the basics. They're preaching what is optimal for you and not those overthinking analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis, I don't know, kind of exercises, tempos and programming. You don't need fucking periodization, bro. If you are a part of the yes, but Hypertrophy work is the dumbest unga boonga shit ever. Just get stronger, do the basics. I can't repeat myself all the fucking time. Here's the solution. Beginners, novices, early intermediates, just focus on the basics. Get stronger at the basic movement patterns that I mentioned earlier or the whole fucking video. Throw in, throw in some isolations for your biceps and triceps, side delts, etc. You cannot grow those maximally by just focusing on the basics. Don't be a purist, don't be a part of that. We are doing bodybuilding here, we are doing hypertrophy work. Get strong for reps, not for one rep max. And you will get big and strong as fuck. For late intermediates and advanced lifters, get even fucking stronger on the basics. And throw in some isolation movements that are specific to targeting your weak points like iliac pulldowns, length and partials, 
cable lateral raises, which are really good, implement the principles of science-based lifting without doing the extra bit of cable press arounds and all those stupid little exercises which are not good for overloading movements or targeting muscle at all as you will use so little weight and it's just unnecessary paralysis by analysis you don't need those shit you don't need that shit when it comes to the eccentric tempo and long pauses just find a middle ground don't be too sloppy but don't be too strict for example rows rows are better with a slight sheet as the resistance profile is more suited towards the short in position which is less superior than the length in position if you do a little cheat and you can use heavier move heavier weights you can bias the length in position more as by cheating you will even out the resistance curve which will make the movements much harder or harder in the length in position and you will get more of a stretch if you do rows in a completely strict fashion with pauses with with five second eccentrics even if you fail and hit failure you will have much more room for growth just because you can't hit a fully contracted position on a row while being strict doesn't mean that you hit actual muscular failure which is so important for muscle growth it's one of the most important factors for muscle growth in fact as the fully contracted position is the weakest position of any muscle you can wrap out five to ten reps or half reps that way you can do it either by that by doing half reps length of partials or you can use a slide sheet from the start till the end which evens out the resistance curve cheating some controlled cheating is not bad and is in fact better than super controlled form which i can test for myself i've been scared of going heavy and actually lifting weights i was always too obsessed with my form and every phase of my training i've been training for five to six years every phase of my training where i did too slow eccentrics and pauses i didn't grow at all but the times are horse cocked some heavy ass weights i grew like fucking seed weed i don't know how it's called but you get the idea this video was more of a rant than an actual informative video but i hoped you still learned something out of it and if you did make sure to subscribe and leave a like for the video see ya